Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We now have the rough casting for the Pontic. The sprue is a good sized sprue. The amount of gold used here was just over nine penny weights. And you can't do this really with much less because the Pontic is a very large casting and you need a good sized sprue button to avoid getting shrink spot porosity. So we're now going to take the, the vent and the sprue off of this casting and try it on the model. Okay, when you remove the sprue from the Pontic, be sure you do not create a flat area. This is a very large sprue, and if you just go in here and start cutting directly on it, you could, you could create a negative uh, surface here, or a flat surface. So be sure that you come at this and leave enough of that sprue on so that you can get back to your original contour. So it does take a little bit of gold, but it is something that you do have to do. Now that we have removed the sprue, we've recontoured that area, recontoured the area for our uh, vent attachment, and we're going to leave, of course, the stabilizers at this point. And now we want to check the Pontic in and see if it is stable in the model. So we put it in, place it firmly into place, and when this goes in, those lugs should hold this Pontic securely. And you notice that this does not rock. It's very securely related. And as we close down our instrument, we can see that the pin is, base, is on the table. If your Pontic is loose, if the lugs you did not capture very well and this is rocking, you obviously cannot adjust your occlusion very carefully at this stage. And what you will have to do is use some red utility wax uh, down here by the ridge or sticky wax, get the Pontic in its best position, and adjust your occlusion. Now if I close the articulator down, you notice that we're light on the molar, light on the bicuspid, and here's a heavy spot on the Pontic. So we're a little heavy there. Come out here towards the mesial on the Pontic and we have no problem. So we just got one little spot here that's holding us up on the Pontic. We don't have very much adjustment to do at all. We're up on the triangular ridge, that distal buckle cusp and we'll just adjust that. Okay, here you can see that we've adjusted the occlusion to a preliminary adjustment, and we are now ready to go to a pre-solder finish on this Pontic. Well, we've now completed the pre-solder finish of the Pontic, and at this point we want to be sure that the ridge relationship is what we had decided it should be as we waxed it up. You can see that we have a clearance there of roughly a millimeter off the ridge. And the Pontic is smooth. We haven't spent too much time on the occlusal since we are going to refine the occlusal as we do the final occlusal adjustment, refining the anatomy in our final polishing. We do have nice smooth contour on the ridge surface where we've taken the, the Pontic uh, sprue off. We have a nice smooth connection. And it's important to do that now because it's going to be a lot easier to do it now than it will be when you have this totally soldered together. Just to remind you that the most important areas to have 
with adequate finish and adequate margins on the retainers are the interproximal areas because once this is soldered together, these areas are going to be very, very hard to reach. Note that during our finishing, we have avoided the lug area on the Pontic. We don't want to abrade these because if we polish these down a lot, obviously the Pontic will not fit well. And we are relying on that precise fit to relate our Pontic. So if you want, if you feel you have to smooth these up to get any investment and so on off, you can use a light sand disc. A safer method than the one used here is to sandblast that area. It will leave this very dull uh, look to the gold, but it'll be very clean, and it will give a good surface to solder to. Take something like a uh, Ward's carver or your, your wax dropper and just put a very, very light coat of flux right into the lug and onto the proximal area that will have the solder. And we're going to do that on both retainers and both of the lug areas of the Pontic. Now we have some Dura-A and a couple pieces of paperclip that we've, paperclip wire that we've cut to the proper length. And the first thing we're going to do is with a paintbrush technique, we're going to put a little bit of Duralay on top of the occlusal surfaces of the Pontic and both retainers. And you want to use a little liquid here to make sure that you get a good firm hold of the occlusal surface. Don't use so much that the Duralay starts to run all over and uh, run down the sides of the retainers and so on. Now, if you notice, I've dropped only one of the pieces of paper clip in there, and that's because I want to use two pieces that are separated a little bit so that the Duralay could not break loose from the wire and allow twisting around the wire and get an improper relationship. If we have two of them in there, it cannot twist. And we can crisscross it with the first or whatever works out well, but keep them separated a little bit. The splint has now finished curing, and we can take the bridge off of our model. And at this point, we could check it on our patient model and make sure that our relationships of the working model and the patient are the same. And whether you check it on the patient or not, what you want to do with your working model is double check it by taking it off and gently push it back to place, make sure it goes all the way down and the relationship remains unchanged. The first step is to be sure that we block out the interproximal areas for soldering. And you can see that the Duralay has come down into the interproximal areas uh, and block those out rather nicely in this particular instance. This usually will not happen. If it does, it's nothing to worry about. But usually what you're going to have to do is take a little inlay wax and flow into this area to be sure that the investment is going to be far enough away from the joint area to allow solder to flow. Notice as I do this that the inlay wax is not being placed down close to the margin of the retainer. We want that margin to be buried in investment just about a millimeter. If that does not happen, you risk burning away that 
fine margin of the retainer. Once the distal area has been done, we'll do the mesial. Okay, now we've finished blocking out the solder joint area for the bicuspid. Notice we stayed away from the cervical margin of the retainer, came back up the lingual, and as you come out to the buckle on that slice area, you're going to be very, very close to the edge of that slice. Do not take your block out all the way to it. There's at least three quarters of a millimeter of that margin left exposed. It does not have any wax on it. And this is what you want to block out the area for the solder joints. We're now ready to invest this. And again, we're going to use whip, whip mix soldering investment. And we're going to use 18 milliliters of water and two scoops, two gel trait measures full of the investment. So we'll put the water in the bowl here and add the powder to it. Okay, and once this is thoroughly mixed, and you don't have to work tremendously fast here, you have a lot of time. Take the inlay brush now, pick up some of the investment, and don't get too much. Your initial uh, increment here should be fairly small. We want to tease that into the casting so that we do not trap any air. You notice I'm vibrating it in place so that we don't trap air and just working right up to the margin. Get that fairly forward and turn around and do the bicuspid. Now the bicuspid is tougher to do than the molar because of that small lingual cusp area. So be sure that you work in there. This is a fairly thin area. If you leave a big air bubble in there, you could lose that when you solder. Be sure that you get the soldering investment well adapted along the sl thin slice and that buckle hood. You don't want any air in there. After you've got your initial adaptation, you can put a little more in here, a little faster. And there we have the retainers, our brim full. We want to get a thicker consistency to build up our soldering platform. So again, we'll take a paper towel and scoop out the majority of the investment into it. We'll leave a little excess in the bowl that we may need to complete the investing procedure. Wrap the paper towel around this and squeeze out the excess water. Don't be too vigorous with this. You don't want this super dry. Roll it around a little bit. You want all the lap lines there taken out. Form this into the approximate size that we want for the soldering investment and put it on our glass slab. Now we're ready to place our bridge in it. Simply invert the bridge on the block, push it down a little bit, and now the excess soldering investment is going to come in handy because we can just take this and paint it right over our stabilizers, and this will lock in the pontic. And you notice the embrasure areas are really well open here. We're not going to have to really worry about opening these areas up more because they are very open to the soldering. So we're just going to have to build the, the protection on those soldering lugs. And then you see how this has come out of the three-quarter crown and really enclose those margins in soldering investment. I'm just going to smooth this off just a little bit. Okay, now we've trimmed back the investment block on the model trimmer. 
and you can see we're about a quarter of an inch beyond the periphery of the bridge. Now, if you're going to use the investment trimmer to trim this to this point, be very careful because this is very soft, it trims very quickly, and you could, if you're not careful, run that bridge right into the model trimmer, so be very careful. You're probably better off to trim it to this size using a knife if you're inexperienced using a model trimmer. Now, you can see how easily this trims with a knife. And we're just going to cut this back very similar to the way you did on the soldering exercise and just put a rounded edge all the way around this. We want the bridge to be the highest point, the area where the heat concentrates. Be careful not to expose that stabilizer on the Pontic. We want to round it off, but we want to keep that stabilizer embedded in the investment because this will guarantee that our Pontic will not shift its position while we're soldering this. Okay, now we've trimmed that soldering block back. You can see that we've tried to round it off. There are no sharp edges. We've got some flame troughs around the joint areas. And now we can just take this and scrub it under running water to make sure that we have no small pieces of investment trying to go into those embrasure areas that would interfere with our soldering. Now the soldering investment has been scrubbed under running water. We have all the loose investment off. It's very clean. And now we just want to let it set for about 20 minutes, half an hour from the start of the mix, and we're ready to start soldering. Now we're going to take the splint, the Duralay splint off our invested bridge. We're going to do this the same way we did it with the soldering exercise. Simply going to hold it in some tongs, invert it over the Bunsen burner flame. And as you remember, we're going to just get this hot. If it starts to flame, I'm not too worried about it, but uh, I don't like all that carbon going into the joints, so We'll try not to let it burn too much. We just get this, you know, to a doy consistency and peel it off. Again, be careful here now that you don't pull the Pontic or the retainer out of the investment as you're taking this Duralay off. Okay, this splint's starting to come off. See, it's just peeling off. It gets kind of rubbery, and there we have it off. You notice where the splint was burning, we picked up a little carbon on that retainer. And that's why we don't want it to burn, because that'll go right into your joint area. And we don't want carbon in the joints. Now, just like your soldering exercise now, the, the uh, bridge is slightly elevated in temperature, so we're going to take some Soldering flux, again, a very small amount here. We've already put some flux in that joint. And you can see how small an increment I have here. And just touch it right to that joint area and let it flow right down into the joint. There's the mesial joint. We'll see if we can get a little bit for the distal joint. And now we're going to anti-flux the, the occlusal surfaces. And again, we will use your chloroform or you can even use Duralay liquid. Pick up some uh, liquid. And you notice I'm working it on this bar. I don't want to go in there with something real fluid because I don't want it to get into the joint area. Now, when it starts to get a little thicker, I can see it a little pasty, I'll take it and I'll put a brush or brush a line right across my occlusal surface, avoiding the 
outer inclines of the marginal ridges. There we have the anti-flux in place. And if you look at it from the top, you can see that we have two bands of anti-flux and the outer inclines of those marginal ridges are exposed and they are fluxed. So now we're ready to place our indicator pieces of solder. And again, this is just one notch on that notched bar that you have. They're very, very small pieces of solder. And pick up your first indicator and piece and let's see if we can reposition that. Here's one in the distal joint. And there's one on the mesial joint. And now that those are, are ready, We'll place the solder bar in our hemostat and dip that again just slightly in flux. So that is fluxed. Okay, you notice we have our uh, indicator pieces in place and look right through the embrasure areas. You can see that this is wide open. There's no investment in there. It's clean. It's wide open. There's no debris. If it doesn't look like that at this point, you must clean that out or you will never get this bridge to solder. I would recommend that you plan on feeding the solder in from the lingual embrasure. It's generally more open, and when you get to the bicuspid area, if you are shaking and you're trying to feed that solder in from the buckle side and that buckle margin's a little exposed, you might melt your margin. Adjust your flame to a soldering flame and start to heat the bridge just as you did when you're soldering exercise right from the top. Go around the perimeter of the bridge, staying on the investment, not the bridge. Now in this exercise, since there is so much gold in that pontic, it'll take more heat to heat that up. So you can start doing a figure eight a few times and come right through right on top of that pontic and put a little extra heat into that pontic area because this is going to tend to be the area that is going to be the hardest to heat up. Now we're going to just keep an eye on those indicators. As you recall, first of all, the crowns will start to discolor. They'll get a cherry red, then kind of a frosty gold, and then the solder should melt. The hottest area of that flame is where the inner cone is coming out and you can, should be able to see a little bit of a black spot there. It's hard to show there's so much light necessary for this TV demonstration that it's hard to show that black spot. But you notice I am playing the flame down on the investment. The heat must come from that investment. Every once in a while, I can go up through that pontic area and get that pontic hot. So you can see the mesial indicator is starting to go here. There it just flashed. So we'll feed in a little bit more, more solder. Pull it through the joint. And there it's come all the way through. 
And we'll work on the distal joint. You can see that one flash. And you see that feed right in there, pull it back and forth a couple times. I want a little more in this distal joint. There we go. Now, as I said before, with your soldering exercise, the bridge here is spanning an edentulous area, so we would like that in its hardened condition, so we'll let this cool to room temperature and then take it out of the investment. Okay, you can see that the solder started to flow a little bit on the lingual surface of the mesial retainer which is not ideal, but uh, it's all right. You can see the size of the distal joint. If we turn this around, you can see from the other side where we were feeding the heat from, we just pulled the solder right through. And you have a nice, well-formed joint, particularly look in the mesial joint area. We don't have a lot of excess gold to grind out. The only area where we do have a little excess, if we look from the occlusal aspect, you can see a little bit of that solder starting to flow up on the occlusal surface of the pontic right in that mesial triangular ridge, but not very much. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.